Hey, hey, Blue Table fans. Let's take a look at the wreckage. Sometimes the camera hangs if I turn it around too fast. It can't take the centrifugal force. Hey, first off, I've got these Thousand Suns in. And I gotta tell ya, you, know, you don't hear too much about Thousand Suns, but the model range is crazy. Obviously, they've done an amazing job with it. I just am really, really happy with what Games Workshop has done. And, and they're not done yet. So, obviously, these are on, on like bottle caps. So, that's just how they came. The client's are doing his own basing. Because I can already hear it. What's with the bases? So, anyway, uh, this is the wreckage of our D&D game last night. It's session three. Uh, my main campaign is called Kingmaker, which is based on um, uh, Paizo Games' Pathfinder role-playing game. I own a ton of their first edition books. I love it so much, and guess what? People love this game. They love the system. They are, uh, you know, they just... I, it's, st it's still got some steam. I had someone ask me about my collection of Pathfinder Adventure Paths uh, the other day. So there's uh, still people doing it. Oh, by the way, this is my favorite Bundaberg root beer and other types of drinks that this company makes. So good job, Australia, for making something awesome. And uh, check this out. This is an owl bear. I didn't get to spring this bad boy on him. And I'm using uh, pieces from the collection of uh, Warhammer Underworlds that I have. I've talked about that before. So this guy is uh, coming up. Uh, this is a main character in the game world, a paladin of Aristil named Oleg. And some people who have played in the Kingmaker series may remember him from the very first, first level part of that. And, uh, yeah, he has a giant axe, which I converted onto this guild ball figure. Normally he has a scythe, because he's from the, um, like, farmer's faction of guild ball. I really love this figure. And, in fact, as you guys know, I love miniatures. And so, anyway, uh, when I'm at my best, I have full-on terrain, and quite frankly... I would love to just be able to make terrain all the time and have new terrain every week and have a crew. Uh, so in my dream world, I'm independently wealthy and that's what I do is I still have artists that I work with, but we're just, um, we're just working on the stuff for my D&D game for the week. And so far out there, I haven't seen anybody doing it to the scale that I have in my mind. Uh, I've tried to do it at Valhalla. It kind of fell flat. I, I had a I, last minute idea for heavy metal, um, like a thing where I just let them have whatever they want for magic items. And it was like totally OP. And it was, it was kind of dumb, actually. And I've gotten back to basics with more of a, um, like a, what is it? Low fantasy, it's called. So anyway, my son plays this tree man guy. And this is him with Enlarge. You recognize those from Games Workshop Sylvaneth. Then my other son just loves this figure. He's totally in love with this, this whole aesthetic here. And he's an alchemist. And then they were... Oh, this is a piece that my... 18-year-old son converted. He plays two characters. And um, then I have uh, three other people in the game. Uh, this is a gun gunslinger. Apparently one of the most powerful classes there are in Pathfinder 1.0. The game, it's completely unbalanced. There, there's a real problem. This is just something I have in my personal collection. That's another player. And then uh, there's a third one that I can't quite put my finger on just yet. She wasn't in this uh, session. Uh, so anyway, and I've been using these guys from Warcry as 
savage barbarians of the wilds. And they have an, an Etten that go, that's with them marauding this village. And uh, all, they're all dead, by the way. <laughs> they, none, of them, none of them survived. And uh, so I like to switch it up with interesting battlefield conditions, like a forest fire, for example. And uh, this, was, um, this was a pretty, it was a pretty cool session. I've been doing it in um, what I call anthology mode, which is every single night is a complete adventure. They're all tied together. It's the same setting, the same people, but they end up back in town every single time before the end of the night. And uh, that way, people showing up isn't a problem because they just aren't there. It's just a new thing. Sort of like a Star Trek away team type of thing. I've turned these endless spells into actual spells in my game. And uh, that's pretty cool. Oh, here's another one of those barbarians. This is another from Underworld's really cool figure. And uh, a lot of these were painted by me. Um, not all of them, but um, some. The barbarians. Uh, my 18-year-old son actually paints his own figures and does a good job. My 14-year-old son paints his own figures. And, of course, from being around me and being trained by me and being around this and other great painters, they've uh, they've certainly got a good skill with it. Uh, my thing is I do a pretty good job and I paint. Um, I, I don't spend too much time on my figures. I, I'd rather paint more things than paint things to a really high level. And the fact is I've kind of topped off at our level five, uh, really. Um, but what, what I do, I think, has a good effect, and I've certainly gotten a little more skilled. All right, well, that's my show-and-tell for the day and my ramble. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. It's uh, pretty cool. I've taken the time over the last, I'm uh, going to say, uh, let's see, four or five years to bulletproof the company, to put it in a situation where I don't have to worry about things so much. And even though I'm operating at a much smaller uh, scale, I gotta tell you, the rewards for the low stress are definitely well worth it. And, uh, and that's, that's what it's all about. Like, how many people do you need to be happy? It's not that many. In fact, less is probably better. And um, of course, part of me, the extroverted part, or uh, something that I couldn't quite label uh, right now, uh, definitely loves the idea of more and more people around because I really like humans. And even my, my four-year-old daughter, <laughs> she refers to people as humans. She goes, oh, there's humans. All right, well, guys, uh, thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And um, life, is, life is really full of joy. You never really experience, experience very much. It's, uh, it's a very narrow slice of life that we each get to live. All right, um, thanks for tuning in. I hope you got your inspiration for the day.